Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to have a look at another collaboration beer, and this one is another half Swedish, half American concoction. So for this review, we're going to stick to Skåne here in the south of Sweden, and we're revisiting a brewery who are very, very well known when it comes to the hazy IPAs. So this is another beer that comes to you from Brewski Microbreakery up in Helsingborg, very, very nice city. It's called the Monkey and a Piñata, and it's a New England IPA coming in at 5.5% ABV. So quite a low ABV for the style, but this is also a collaboration with Tampa Bay Brewing Company, obviously from Florida over in America, who I've never encountered before actually, so really curious to see how this one turns out and hopefully in the future I can review some of their own beers at some point. So we'll see how that goes. But a really nicely presented beer this one. This was released on the 24th of January 2020 through the Tilfeld sortiment, or formerly the Small Partiers in Seestenbolaget here in Sweden. And uh, there was a few Swedish breweries released in this one actually. Normally the Swedish breweries release at the very start of the month through the local and small Sigligt uh, assortments. So um, yeah, interesting to see how this one turns out. Cool to add another American brewery or take another American brewery off the list on the channel here. And I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. Um, it does say it's a New England IPA. But I'm very curious with the lower ABV to see if it's going to be more like a kind of Florida IPA, you know, a little bit lighter and uh, kind of crisp but with a little bit of an almost slightly sour kind of quality to it. We'll just need to see how that turns out. But like I say, very curious to try this one and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on it as well. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website. It's the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brewski before and my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Tampa Bay Brewing. Very first time I'm encountering these guys as I mentioned. There's all the usual social media down there too. If you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, province, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to very very regularly. There's also one there for the American beers that's added to regularly. This one will appear in both of those because it is half and half and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway to tell you a little bit about Brewski first off then we'll start with the home brewery then. So, as I've told you before, Brewski Microbreakery were founded back in 2014 and they're based in Helsingborg, a very nice city in the northwest corner of Skåne here in the south of Sweden. So, the founders of the company are Marcus Jarmusson, Johan Bridsen, Alfred Olsen and Robin Skoglund. And all of these guys were largely inspired to get into brewing beer as a result of their experience with the West Coast American craft beers. So, Marcus was originally associated with the High Nose brand of beer, which is brewed at the Hoganis Breakery, a little bit to the northwest of Helsingborg on the Kulaberry Peninsula, which is definitely worth visiting by the way. Um, but some of those beers are still brewed up there and the original Brewski beers were brewed up there as well. But all of the Brewski beers are now brewed at their own, at their own facility that they have in the old train yard in Helsingborg, a bit to the south of the main station. And this site has a capacity of 100,000 litres of beer per month. But in 2016 they started their own beer festival which is called Brewski Val. The first one had over 40 different brewers and they've expanded it year on year. I tend to go to that every year because it's one of the best beer festivals in Scandinavia um, but they also used to open up the brewery once a month as well as a bar and called it Barsky um, but of course they now have their own bar in the town as well which also serves a kind of American take on ramen which is not so authentic but it does taste very very nice I would recommend that you go there and have um, and have a look at it because it's I really enjoyed it even though um, you know with my Japanese girlfriend and stuff I'm quite used to the authentic stuff I did rate it pretty highly um, but you also get some really nice brewski beers in there that you won't find otherwise or you can sometimes get the ones that are coming into say Stembolaga a little bit early because they're on tap. This bar opened of course back in 2018 but as of January 2020 when I'm filming this review for you they've produced in the region of 300 different types of beer and they're mainly known for um, the like you know sort of Berliner Weisses and uh, the kind of hazy IPA type beers so those are definitely worth checking out if you get the chance. Uh, best beers that I've had from this brewery the Triple Berry Pie that I had recently the Berliner Weisse that was really 
uh, nice actually. Conan double IPA has always been a very kind of firm favourite of mine. That's probably the best IPA that I've had from them. Uh, and you know their Faber series is always very good. The Passion Faber and the Mango Faber in particular um, really kind of struck me from that series. So there's if you like hazy IPAs, this is a brewery that you definitely want to go for. But that said, they have released a few Imperial Stouts in recent years that have turned out very nicely as well. I just wish they would do it a little bit more often actually. I'd love to see these guys have a go at brewing in different styles, but mainly an IPA and Berliner Weisse brewery this one. But definitely worth checking out. One of the best IPA producers in Sweden, in my opinion. So um, yeah, that's all you need to know about Brewski then. So if you want to learn more, check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram. And of course, you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all in the information on all the different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, let's go on to the American side of things. And it's another brand new brewery here on the channel. So Tampa Bay Brewing, as the name suggests, and as I told you earlier, are from Tampa in Florida, and they were founded back in 1995 by Vicky Doble, which makes them one of the oldest craft breweries in the state of Florida. So Vicky had grown up in England and Scotland and her dad had owned a number of pubs and so she'd been involved in the, the, the booze trade, the pub trade basically from a very young age. So they founded Tampa Bay Brewing when they opened their first brew pub in Ybor City in 1997 if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Y-B-O-R. Um, but Vicky started the company with her sons and it was David who was an assistant brewer, but he left in 1998 to be a commercial pilot. Her other son, John, died in a house fire in 2003, and he'd been working in the company, and this prompted David to return. Um, her other sons also own breweries as well. So Mike owns the Explorium Brew Pub in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Mark also owns Aviator Brewing, which you'll find near Raleigh in North Carolina. So quite a big brewing family, this one, actually. You know, three generations of brewers, which is pretty cool, and probably more to follow, I would assume if uh, you know the sons have probably got kids and things like that but in 2006 these guys knew, moved to a new premises in Ibor and they had problems with the state over the licensing and this really created problems with distribution so for quite a while they were just kind of bobbing along basically and um, but this was fixed in 2011 and they bought new tanks and expanded their brewing capacity and they continued to build their brand and, and in 2015 they opened uh, a new brewery in uh, West, Ch uh, West Chase rather which has gone on to help them grow massively, of course. But as of January 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, according to Untapped, these guys have produced in the region of 1,300 different types of beer. So a pretty prolific brewery, this one, um, since they've been around about 25 years, but definitely worth checking out if you get the chance from what I gathered. The, some of the beers that they have are very highly rated on a uh, rate beer and untapped and things and that's always a good barometer to try different beers of course and like I say hopefully I can try some of their own stuff at some point in the future. My mum and dad go out to the States fairly regularly so maybe the next time they go to Florida I can get a hold of some of the different Tampa Bay beers. So um, yeah that's all you really need to know about uh, Tampa Bay Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn more of course you can check out the brewery website they've got some nice pictures of their bars and things in there, the tap rooms which looks as if they're definitely worth checking out and uh, you can check out their social media of course uh, Facebook, Instagram, I think they have Twitter as well if I remember correctly um, but you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to get information on all the different beers that they've done so um, yeah that's all your history section for the moment let's get on and actually taste the beer so I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this before we open it up you can see it's that typical kind of brewski style you can see the piñata there um, and it's, yeah, it's kind of, almost looks like kind of licorice. It looks like some of the sweets. I've, I've told you in these videos before, for those of you watching abroad, um, the amount of sweets and candy that Swedes consume is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I do wonder how there's not more uh, diabetics here in Sweden. But it looks pretty nice. You can see he's also got the thing in his mouth, the hop cones. The kind of whip thing with the hop cones. But there you can see the symbol for a Tampa Bay Brewing Company. And there you can see the little Brewski dude down here as well. This is one of these kind of thinner cans, of course, that Brewski have moved into. It reminds me of the kind of Red Bull cans, actually, the tall 330 milliliter ones. But as I told you earlier, the monkey in, the monkey in a piñata, 5.5% um, New England style IPA, this one. So, um, yeah, without further ado then, let's get this guy out and we'll get on to the tasting. So... When it comes to Florida and craft beer, of course, you know, everyone really over here in Europe, everyone kind of knows Cigar City. They were probably the first brewery from Florida that we heard of over here. 
And in uh, you know in recent times, it's Jay Wakefield is really making his name over here. And I've you know we know a, a bit about Florida IPAs, and that's one of the things that Brewski um, have brewed a few specifically Florida style IPAs. And in my experience, as I told you earlier, those tend to be you know a little bit kind of crisper and light, and almost have a little bit of a kind of they've got, they're very citrusy and almost very slightly sour in some ways too. So I'm very curious to see if this one is going to turn out like that but when you open it up straight away it does have a very kind of citrusy and astringent aroma to it and it's lovely and hazy as you would expect from Brewski of course so um, yeah I can't really I don't really know what to say about Tampa Bay Brewing Company because like I said this is my first ever beer involving these guys but um, as you can see with this beer and as you kind of expect from a New England IPA it's poured a lovely kind of bright hazy colour this one it's, it's this is definitely a very bright yellow one, I should say. So a bright yellow haze. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see this beer is very, very hazy. It's not the most kind of soupy um, New England IPA that you're going to come across. You will get ones that appear a little bit more opaque than this. You can see that there was a solid half finger of a frothy, but also kind of bumpy towards the edge head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just heading up towards uh, the bottom of that head there but you know overall it does look very very nice and um, yeah pretty much looks the part for a New England IPA nothing overly surprising about this one so um, yeah let's have a look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. Oh yeah straight away you know this is a bit a very kind of smooth smelling IPA it actually in terms of its aroma it really reminds me a lot of Julius from uh, Treehouse Brewing Company so the malt base, you can pick up a little bit of the kind of astringency from the wheat, but mainly it comes across as quite a creamy, um, smooth, uh, oaty type malt base that's in here. Um, but it's well balanced actually, I do like that about it. Little tiny bit of biscuity sweetness, but I would say mainly oaty and creamy with a little bit of that wheaty, white bready sort of thing in there. But other than that, you've got some nice hoppy characters as well. The malt base is quite simple, but quite well done in my mind. Um, so you can pick out a little teeny bit of earthiness to this one, but that's fairly minimal. Nice kind of bright floral notes. I would say it actually leans a little bit more towards the grassy side of things right enough. It comes across as very bright and very grassy. Um, on the hoppy side of things, to me it's quite... Uh, it really comes across as being quite mango-like. So, you know, that could be citra. Um, it's got a little bit of a kind of passion fruity note as well, and I mean... You know, it could be like Idaho 7 or something like that. There's something in my head that tells me this might be Idaho 7 um, that's in here because I remember it being very, very smooth. It could, of course, be just be a little bit of a, a good old Simcoe because Simcoe has that... Um, kind of Sim For me, Simcoe was always a very smooth and almost milky smell in passion fruit. And there's something... Well, I say that this is quite a bright smelling beer. There is something that's just a little bit nostalgic about this one. And a lot of the IPAs I've had in recent times that have been passion fruity, it's either been Idaho 7... Um, Galaxy, um, or what's the other one? It's gone right out of my head now. But there's another quite big passion fruity hop. You know, I've had some New Zealand ones that have had passion fruit um, with them as well. But for me, this one, it really. Um, there, I, I want to say that I, this could just be a Citron Simcoe. I wouldn't be surprised about that. But there is a little touch of an orange, you know, maybe mosaic going on as well. I always like playing Guess the Hops with these beers. So for me, Basically, to sum up the fruits rather than guess the hops, um, I would say it's got a little bit of a mango note. There's a little bit of a kind of like papaya-like smoothness to it as well, but it's also got a little touch of a kind of or juicy orangey, tangerine kind of note, which to me is more likely to be mosaic. But the other hop that that could be that's becoming more popular is uh, is sabro, actually. Um, and of course, when it comes to uh, you know when it comes to oranges, you've of course got amarillo, mandarina, bavaria. Uh, Pacifica, I forget the other one from, uh, is it Malteke from New Zealand, M Maliteke is quite an orangey one as well. Um, so you've got a good choice of hops to use if you want uh, a bit of orange in them. Uh, Azaka is the other one too. Um, so yeah, some lovely, there's maybe a little touch of pineapple in here as well. So tangerine oranges, a bit of pineapple, a little bit of mango for me. Um, and it's also got a little kind of bit of a lemon, it's not quite as sharp as lemon, but it's got a little bit of that kind of lemon limey zest to it. I mean, if we're talking lemon limes, Centennial lemon and uh, Centennial would be the lemon 
and the lime's more likely to come from uh, from Equinor or something, but I highly doubt there's all those hops in it. But yeah, a little bit of a lemon limey note on the, the front end, then uh, mangoes, a bit of a tangerine orange, a bit of pineapple maybe, and some uh, like smoother papaya type notes underneath. So difficult to pick exactly what hops are in this one, but um, a very nice aroma. And of course that is the main thing, very juicy and fruity, but it's got a nice little bit of um, grassiness to it to back up as well as a very smooth malt base. So take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck into it because it is very, very inviting. But this one is the Monkey in a Piñata IPA coming in at 5.5% ABV, brewed in Helsingborg by Brewski Microbrewery, but in collaboration with Tampa Bay Brewing Company from over in Florida and America. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanju, Skull. Yeah, that's nice that, I mean, to me, first impression, I would, this isn't the most adventurous beer that you'll get from Brewski, I mean, it's, it's not the biggest and kind of, um, you know, it's not the biggest and punchiest of beers you're going to get, but at 5.5%, um, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a big kind of kick in the balls, if you like, like, um, like Conan was, um, it's a nice kind of sessionable type IPA, this one, and I think, um, it's more, to be honest, I would describe this as more of a paleo, to be honest with you, and I mean, it might sort of technically be an IPA, because of course that's all about the malt to hop ratio, you could just brew a lower alcohol IPA that's got the malt to hop ratio, and rather than making it a paleo, of course, but um, it's really, it really is in terms of, if you consider it as that a sort of sessionable um, hazy paleo, then it really ticks a lot of boxes. It, it's nicely done. You can't really ask for much more than that. It's becoming a bit more common as well for breweries to brew lower alcohol things when they do collaborations rather than brewing big, massive beasts. Um, but yeah, I like this one. This is a good sessionable beer, this, so thumbs up. To both breweries involved, and it's definitely, for my, in my mind, it's definitely more of a, a New England IPA than it is a, a Florida one in my mind. It does have a little bit of the crispness that you would expect of a Florida IPA, and I've noticed that there is that little bit of trend with, amongst some of the Swedish breweries. A lot of them are putting, um, you know, a bit of Pilsner malt in their uh, in their IPAs now to give you that little bit of crispness. And I do wonder, maybe there is a little bit of that in here, um, but it's got it's got the nice kind of brighter fruity notes that you would expect of um, of a Florida IPA though, but I like this one, it's, for me, first impression, like I say, is a lovely kind of sessionable beer. So let's try and break the flavour of this one down a little bit then. So yeah, straight away with this one, um, it's got, you'll notice it does have a lovely kind of smooth white bready base to it. You can definitely feel the wheat form in the backbone of this beer and it becomes a little bit more obvious the further into the aftertaste it goes. But as you move more into the centre of the palate you start to pick up the more oaty creamy notes out of this one. I very much doubt that this beer has like lactose or um, dextrose things. It just says yeah barley, wheats and oat in this one. Um, Cormard, Vete and Havre. So yeah it's, de it's just kind of a straight up yeah, malt based this one, but it works well. There's maybe a little teeny teeny bit of biscuitiness in the middle of the palate and you know that will be the alcohol coming out. Um, but it's a very straight up malt base. The, as I say, white bready base with the kind of wheat. You get the more oaty creamy notes in the middle and then a little bit of a biscuity sweetness just on top of that. Nothing too much to report uh, in terms of maltiness in this beer. But on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, there is a teeny little bit of earthiness there and that makes me wonder if there is mosaic in this one, because mosaic will give you a little bit of that earthiness. But as you come further forward along the side of the palate, ve that very quickly disappears and it becomes more kind of bright and floral. It's almost a little touch kind of spicy. and um, But round the very front curve of the palate, that's where you get the lighter kind of grassy notes. And then behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you get the big oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer and uh, for me this one it's it comes across as a little bit more citrusy that sort of um, citrusy freshness that I was picking up in the um, 
the aroma of the beer shines through in the flavour, I would say. So yeah, for me this one has, um, if you go to the back of that fruity part of your palate, um, it really leans towards the kind of mango notes, it's very soft fruity beer for the most part, for me it's nice and mango, you'll maybe get a little tiny touch of a passion fruit you know at the back of the palate there, but then um, there is something that tells me this might be Idaho 7, um, but yeah as you come further forward from that you can, the passion fruit moves to a more mango you know, then you get a little bit of a, you get a wee bit of a more, um, how do you say, um, it, 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 you do get a little touch of an orangey note to this one, but there is, um, it's not quite as prominent as I would have thought if it was mosaic, that's the thing, but yeah, it evolves to be more mango-y, then you get a little bit of a um, kind of orangey note, and there's maybe a little bit of a, pardon me, a sort of limey character. Um, towards the front of the palate too, but mainly, yeah, teeny bit of passion fruit, quite a bit of mango, wee teeny bit of orange, and then a little bit of sort of limey quality for me. I like how that goes together. The liminess sort of supports the grassiness that's on the edge of the palate too, which is uh, which is really quite nice. But in terms of a kind of sessionable, hazy, paleo, that's really pretty damn solid, I have to say. So, you know, thumbs up to, to both breweries there. Um, if I was going to drink an IPA, you know, I would always tend to go for, you know, the sort of six and a half, seven percent one. I probably wouldn't think to uh, to try a paleo, to be honest, but they have impressed me with this one. So maybe I need to kind of rethink that approach, actually. Um, but yeah, a, a solid, solid paleo for me. So thumbs up to both Brewski and to... Um, Thumbs up to both Brewski and uh, Tampa Bay Brewing Company for this one. Brain fart there, but yeah, lovely, kind of sessionable, easy paleo this one. So, yeah. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, I'd say that this beer, it's fairly mid-bodied actually, if when you consider the alcohol of it. It does have a good bit of body to it, which is, uh, which is impressive again. Um, Overall, I'd say the mouth be feel is a balance between smooth but also a little bit wet. Some nice kind of um, hoppy bitterness to the beer. I would say we're talking, you know, around sort of thirty-ish IBUs. It does feel quite bright this one, but I think that might just be because of how fresh the beer is. But um, it's also got some lovely lighter. Um, it's also got a little bit of that kind of juicy fruity note to it as well. The fruit isn't quite as big and oily as you might get from some beers within this style, but it's got a nice, um, just it's just got a little bit of a kind of sweeter character, and that lingers into the aftertaste too. It's, for me, it's the smoothness of the oats, and um, a little bit of the wheatiness and some of the floral notes that linger there the further you go into the aftertaste. But overall, really, really quite nice beer, this one, and uh, I'm glad that I was able to try this and cool to uh, tick another... American brewery off the list if you like. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. A solid, sessionable New England hazy IPA, whatever you want to call it with this one. I would argue that this one probably is more of a paleo at 5.5%, but like I say, technically speaking, it's all about the, the um, hop to malt ratio or malt to hop ratio. Um, to decide whether it's an IPA or not. It might, it might be an IPA just brewed to a lower um, malt content, so they do the hops to match. But lovely beer, this one, and uh, as I say, check this one out if you get the chance. The Monkey and a Piñata from Brewski Microbrewery up in Helsingborg in Skåne here in the south of Sweden in collaboration with Tampa Bay Brewing Company from Florida over in America. Let's leave it at that. Until the next time, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys very soon. Make sure you check out my social media, and make sure you check out Brewski and Tampa Bay Brewing. Slanja, Skull, cheers. I hope you've enjoyed this one.